Good morning, my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting an update from Alora Resources, which trades on the TSX V Exchange under the symbol ELO. And joining me today is Aloro's Executive VP of Exploration, Dr. Bill Pearson. Bill, thank you very much for coming on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderfully. Uh, obviously, uh, that's what we uh, explorationists live for, is hitting great holes. And uh, we certainly put out a couple of really good ones and uh, uh, very pleased that the market has positively reacted. So I'm delighted to be here to give you an update and tell you a little more about why these holes are so significant. And congratulations on your big news today as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, I'll be doing a few forward-looking statements here. So let's let's get into a little bit of the nitty-gritty details. Um, for those that may or may have not been following the Aloro story, let me give you just a little bit of uh, overview where we are. We're in uh, southern uh, Bolivia, very prolific uh, uh, area of mineralization, particularly these remarkable polymetallic deposits. And the Isca Isca property here, we're basically sitting in this giant volcanic edifice formed about 15 million years ago. So uh, if you if you look here, you, you see this uh, black line there, dotted line. That's the outline of this caldera. It's about 1.8 by 1.6 kilometers. Uh, the actual whole complex we now know trends about north, northeast, south, south, west, uh, sorry, north, northwest, south, south, east. Um, and, uh, and it's about four by two kilometers. It's huge. Uh, our big discoveries here, we're focused right now on the Santa Barbara breccia pipe. We have several other major breccia pipes here, Central Porco, our original discovery, the smaller Walbert Casa. And you can see the uh, red line here, dash line. That's kind of our mineral resource definition area. Um, we've had an interesting problem here in Iska Iska because while we say we're doing definition drilling, we haven't defined the limits of anything yet. We've, we've, we're on 102 holes now. I've got five drills going. We still haven't to find the limits of the system. We keep pushing it out. Uh, and the drill hole that we put out, drill holes we put out today, particularly DSBU-10, that, that's one of the highest, uh, the highest grade one we've had uh, so far. So we have this huge complex. It's a huge porphyry epithermal system, and it is big. That 1,400 long Target zone by about 500 meter wide is all mineralized. But where we're really, really focused here, uh, as I'll show you in more detail, is right around this area in here, uh, which is definitely turning into a very, very major uh, feeder structure for the epithermal uh, mineralization. Uh, now, if I just give you a little bit of an overview of a, a panorama here, um, you can get a sense of the circular uh, uh, caldera feature here. Uh, you can see where the Santa Barbara breccia pipe, uh, Santa Barbara added our original drilling out of Wawakaza, our big potential porphyry target in Porco. It's a great area to work in. It's like working in Arizona or Nevada, except that uh, sort of 4,000 meters. So let's look at our release then. Uh, this is really a phenomenal hole, DSBU-10. This goes across the guts of this feeder zone, uh, 188 uh, gram silver equivalent. And note we have adjusted prices to current day prices because metals have been down. But what's really exciting about this hole, this is by far our highest hole uh, for silver. 44.75 grams silver per ton. It's got a bit of gold. It's very strong in zinc, lead, and also has tin. And look at the length of this thing, 349 uh, meters. You know, that's over three uh, football fields. So it's continuing to show that this feeder system is big. It certainly looks like it's getting stronger as we get deeper. 
and it's certainly wide open to uh, the southeast. And uh, we also released a second hole, which was a surface drill hole, DHK uh, 24. So hole 10 was was drilled at a, an, a it was roughly northeast at minus 60. DHK 24 came back the other way um, to the southwest. And again, you can see that tremendous intersections in 24. This is a thousand meter hole and 62% of this hole has reportable um, uh, intersections. Uh, and you can see the sort of grades here. Uh, we're getting silver, a lot of zinc, lead. Uh, deeper down, we're also getting uh, tin. So very, very exciting numbers. And, and uh, DHK24 is about 100 meters uh, southeast of, of DSBU10. So this feeder system is continuing uh, to grow. You can see the table here with all the results. And this is very, very typical of viscous drill holes. I've been in this business for 47 years. I've worked in, I've done major projects in 18 countries around the world. I've never ever seen drill results like this that are so consistently mineralized. When you look at 349 meters here, virtually every sample is above cutoff which is our 30 gram silver equivalent. Mm -hmm. There's almost nothing here with zero. And, you know, we don't get, uh, people don't notice a lot of our other intersections. You can see there's 30, 30 meters, 24, 24, 13, 10, 20. I mean, most drill programs would be happy to have 30, 40 meter intersections. We've got tons of them, but of course we end up with these three, four, 300 plus uh, ones that people uh, pay um, a, a attention to. So very, very good, solid results. And it's certainly my sense is as we're getting deeper in the feeder zone, we're seeing the grades go up. So if you look at this plan map, you can see the yellow circles are, are around uh, the two holes that uh, we reported. And if you look at this area here, uh, where you see this black dot, this is the feeder uh, system here where we're getting the uh, high grades here. It, it's certainly open at depth. It's open to the southeast. It does continue to the northwest, but it certainly seems like it's stronger going to the um, uh, southeast. Actually, interestingly, down here in uh, uh, our drilling in Porco and DPC3, we actually had a high zinc intersection in this hole. And I would not be surprised if we end up uh, showing that this thing, in fact, goes across much of the caldera. Right now, that's speculation, but uh, given the remarkable extent and consistency of this, it uh, wouldn't uh, surprise me at all. And if we look at it in section, and again, I always emphasize when I'm talking about ISCIS, I mean, look at the scale here. This is a kilometer. And you can see here, um, DSBU 10 off on the right side here and DHK 24 in the middle. And you can look at all the tremendous mineralization here. Uh, so basically where we sit right at the moment is we are continuing to show this feeder zone is huge. Uh, we are continuing to do what I call a quote definition drill program. Um, but in fact, I put a drill program together about 15,000 meters. That's what we're going to complete, which will fill in most of our areas. And, and that'll be where we do our, our, um, our maiden resource. But it, it's going to be a progress report because I haven't defined the limits of this. Uh, it's a remarkable. The other thing that's very interesting as we get deeper down the holes here, we start seeing more tin. Uh, we certainly are convinced there's a huge tin porphyry down there. We, we've caught the edge of it. And of course, in DSBU3, which is probably a slice of this porphyry that's come up to a shallower level, we had 373 meters at average 0.22 tin. Um, this is an extraordinary system, and, and we're continuing 
to develop the pitcher. We've got five drills going at about 20,000 meters in the labs. Uh, and you're going to see a lot more uh, good news coming out. Um, the other thing that we have been working on, we do have a, uh, a really nice 3D model and, and verify that we're finishing off and we hope to launch that uh, fairly soon. So uh, there's going to be lots of exciting news coming forward, more drill results. We're aiming for that mineral resource, which probably will come later on, hopefully towards the end of this year. You today had released some significant intercepts from the Santa Barbara target at Isca Isca. Um, do you want to talk us through some of those results? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's the results for DSBU-10, uh, 188 gram silver equivalent per ton. Uh, and those are, I adjusted the prices downwards because the metal prices is down. I wanted to make sure people realize you know, we're not playing games with number. We just strictly do the gram silver equivalent on a comparative basis. What's really exciting, this is by far the highest grade silver. Uh, we've got some gold, very strong zinc, lead, and tin, uh, mm -hmm. and the width. And this is a remarkably consistent, continuously mineralized hole. This isn't something that's high, low, nothing. This is continuously mineralized. Uh, and that's one of the features of ISCA. ISCA hole 24, uh, again, some ex excellent intersections. You're talking about a 926 meter hole uh, where 62% of it is reportable, uh, which average 110 grams equivalent. That, that's an exceptional hit rate for a 900 meter hole. Uh, it's about, in DSBU 10, it's about 60%. Uh, and that's very typical of what we see in in, in, in Santa Barbara, long, continuous uh, intercepts. And you can see, again, we've got some uh, very, very nice uh, intersections here over, see this lower 110 gram silver equivalent over 177 uh, meters. So every time we report these holes in the this uh, feeder structure, you know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of, of meters. Uh, we are, we, we have obviously an aggressive program. We're doing more drilling to the Southeast. We're doing some fill in to get the resource, but I really like to emphasize to your readers, we still have not defined the limits of this remarkable system. It remains open to the Northwest. It remains open to at depths to the Southwest to uh, and the Southeast. and uh, ultimately, down there, there's a huge, I think, a, a very huge um, porphyry tin deposit that uh, we, we're catching the edge of, and uh, ultimately we'll, we will uh, drill. And that tin porphyry is what drove this huge, monstrous uh, volcanic system, which has been remarkably uh, preserved. So that kind of brings me to my next question uh, for the investors that are listening. Could you give them an overview of what everyone can expect from your company over the next few months? Well, you can certainly expect more drill results. We've got a lot of holes in the lab. Um, you know, the unfortunately, we all suffer from slow lab turnaround, but uh, we have a couple of labs doing analysis for us. Uh, and our crews in the field uh, log and sample uh, uh, the course very, very efficiently. So we try and turn it around. Obviously, as soon as we have results, we get them out. So there will be a lot more drill results. We're continuing to uh, work on uh, metallurgy. We put out a very good update uh, in, in June on our metallurgy. Uh, that work is continuing. And we are focused on getting this maiden uh, mineral resource, uh, which likely will come probably in, I'm hoping in Q4. Um, the investors need to realize it's got dragged out a bit because we haven't defined the limits of anything. Normally when you drill your resource, you define the limit of your zone and you do sufficient drilling to establish your grade and you go ahead and do your resource. Well. 
uh, every time we step out on this thing, we keep getting more and more mineralization. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, so we're at a point now where I've just come up with a program to fill in our holes, uh, continue to move it uh, southeast, but it'll be a progress report. So investors can certainly, uh, uh, you know, look forward to that. Um, you know, we are also looking at doing some of the uh, preliminary engineering work that would be required to P for a, a potential PEA down the road, because obviously once we produce an MRE, People will be asking when's the PEA, so we're doing a jump start on that. Um, you know, we're continuing to run very strong ESG programs, uh, do a lot of community engagement. Uh, we built something like 100 Santa Station stations last year. We're doing uh, more than that this year in the local community, so all of that is moving along. Uh, but the size and scale of this system is really quite remarkable. And to go through a drill program, you know, we've done around 63, 64,000 meters and 102 holes since we started. Um, we're coming up to our two year anniversary in September. Uh, and to not have a blank hole is really quite remarkable. I, I've, I've never seen anything like that in 47 years in the business. And I've had the privilege of working on some uh, pretty major uh, projects. So I would say stay tuned. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots more coming down the road. I've got a fantastic team in Bolivia led by uh, Dr. Oswaldo Arce, who's one of the most well-known and respected geologists in Bolivia. Uh, and he's doing a terrific job shepherding the program down there. Uh, and at some point we'll define the limits of this system, but it's going to be quite a while. All right, well, that's very exciting. We'll have to have you on soon, Bill. Thank you so much for the update and have a great day. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Megan.